Mm -hmm. I had um, mentioned to you guys two or three weeks ago, um, you know, just about uh, some feelings of, of, of guilt. I was telling you about um, posthumous trials and, you know, and, and, and when I woke up that morning, I was, I was cleaning up and, and found this and I actually didn't realize I'd like to read you something that I wrote that morning that this was on my mind. I actually got up and wrote this and I found it later on cleaning up and I really didn't, didn't really remember, but it was, um, so let me read this to you. Um, this just was my, my thoughts that day, um, waking up on this day. And in this moment, I have no other me to feel proud or ashamed of, to thank or to blame, to provide to or receive advice from, to remember or forget. The wind has taken it all and with it brought a new time and a new me. I cannot compare. I cannot judge. The, no, the one on trial is not here to provide testimony. Looking back, the truth is just as distorted as looking ahead. 2020 is all we can see not much to me the rest is conditioning of the should have done or should do the wind has even taken these words away now i have nothing other than this me uh -huh. Uh -huh. <laughs> I, I found that note and and saved it to to share with you guys. Um, Thank you so much. Just some words when I first opened my eyes that morning, and but the one on trial that reminded me that was that morning that I had that thought process about being on trial or trying that, that you know that that, that was, idea I was sharing. That was the, the line that stuck out to me was the one where I'm on trial and have no testimony. Or how did you word it again? The one, the one on trial is not here to make testimony. Yeah, I love that. Oh, the word trial and trying is same root. I'm on trial. I'm trying. Yeah. There is only one. What did you say? There's only one me here. I cannot. Wow. Mm -hmm. That was beautiful. Thank you. That was really good. I had mm -hmm. I had I hadn't heard that. No, I had um I had not shared that with you. Um so nothing nothing other than this me. Um, <laughs> Love it. This is all all I have today. It would it would be wonderful to keep that mindset through the day. You know, to stay in that that place of. Um, it was so cool how while you were reading that too, the there's a bird outside the window that just started just hollering, <laughs> like oh, <yeah>. singing it. <laughs> Maybe I'll maybe I'll type that. Then I haven't I haven't shared anything. I, I created an Instagram account, um, but I hadn't shared anything on there yet. Maybe I'll maybe I'll type that up in some way and post that. Definitely, definitely. What came so to back in, Oh, go ahead. What came to me when you were. Uh, reading this is that there's always this one center point of identity and it moves through states 
And if we get caught that the state is who you are, then you can't even move forward. But if you get caught, if you get, if you understand that there is this core, like there's only one me, but this one me is a traveler, a wanderer, and we are wanderers, we're not only wandering through space and physical space, we're wandering through the ether, emotional waves. And I'm just now beginning to realize that all we have to do is just wait, just wait until this state passes the second one comes and nothing is permanent and it's it's not the pain that's the issue it's the attachment to the pain that's the issue it's not the state that's the issue it's the thing that we that we grab the state and we want to make it forever or we don't want to feel it ever and then that's what creates stuckness in the body but everything if, if you just wait if there's enough breaths that you allow if there's enough movement that you allow you change the environment change the world changes it's a new day and you, we don't have to resolve much <laughs> you, you have to just wait and breathe and everything's fine oh you should you 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 could do a um a track uh with that to that effect that's I, I know I need to listen to that more often. That's that's something I needed to hear today, actually. Thank you. Um, it is it is the, either the attachment is, oh, I want to keep this, or I don't want that. That's, hmm. Yeah, that approach makes things so much easier to release the the drama or the stress that you would attach those thoughts to and toil with it and try and figure out and try and dissolve it or try and fix it or try and find somebody else to just stand back and wait and be patient. That's just like, whew, take a load off, but less responsibility. Mm. It's so hard to do though in the moment and- um, Said than done. Yes, easier said than done. And 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 for, for me also, you know, uh, being very driven my whole life and um, results-based mm -hmm. and Im impatient. <laughs> um, it is hard to visualize waiting as an action. Mm -hmm. Exactly, yeah. That is, that is still accomplishing, you know, and it's accomplishing so much. It's accomplishing yeah. everything we ever needed. It's the answer to everything. Mm -hmm. And even the beautiful moments, they have their expiry date. Like, I can eat the papaya, and the papaya is amazing. If I eat four, they're, dis <laughs> they're disgusting. I don't want to eat them for a week anymore. So everything, everything can become too much, even the good stuff, even the person that you're, that, that you're madly in love with your, you guys know it the best, like you are in long-term marriages, you can, you really can love each other, but there has to be time away for you to read, to just release energy. And you also, Jolene, you have your space. And then what I feel is this is so amazing. I don't want to let it go. And I don't want, I want to dwell in this moment forever. But if I pin down the beautiful stuff, I also pin down and not, I'm not able to let go of, of times when it's hard. So it's always both ways. Yeah, I do like your analogy, though, about us wandering through the um, um, the ether itself um, from from different states within one to another. Um, so I've been um, um, so I've been doing that same thing, and and and. Um, probably in a little better spot than than 
few weeks ago. Um, and, you know, some of it is just, is staying on the move and not attaching to a given mindset, you know, mentally, mentally staying on a move, but, um, um, certainly, certainly good to, to be able to, um, talk some things out, you know, with you guys. Always, always. Um, and then some of it where you wouldn't think just logic would come into play, it, it still sort of does because I am not here to defend myself. My past me is not here to defend himself. So so even if I just have a twisted logic way of looking at, you know, it doesn't make sense to to look back, then then that's kind of what what I'll what I'll take. And memories are never accurate either. I've kept diaries my whole life and I'll go back and I'll think one thing happened and I'll reread my diary and be like, what, who is this person and why? And it was the exact experience of what I had as a teenager. And I would write it down because it happened that day. But my memory as an adult looks back and said that that never happened or it didn't happen that way. So we do change even our own memories, let alone memories of other people. Mm. Each person has their own way of looking at someone else's life and their memories. So like you said, it's not not real. It's not accurate. Yeah. Mm. I've read some things before, and that's that's funny that you mentioned that even even something that has just happened when you start to read um any kind of um any anything about the psychology of witnesses to an event or witnesses to a crime and just how inaccurate things are <laughs> even moments later that was right in front of them and now witness. you know how am i going to remember even what happened to me years ago or whatever it gets colored by or can i guess some of my own memories get their own conditioning <laughs> uh, i would describe someone as their past life they'd be like no it doesn't they don't look like that that was their past <laughs> yes they and actually even... did an experiment with that one time and had had a whole room of people and the person was giving a speech or giving a, a talk about something and they had it set up where someone rushed in, did some aggressive, mm. I don't want to say crime, but something bad, like stole, did whatever. And then they had everyone in the audience be a witness and describe what they saw. And it was so randomly. <laughs> <laughs> that, was, that was very telling. When I watched that, I was like, oh, God. It was one guy and everyone said it was two two females coming in or something. <laughs> I was about to say that before uh, uh, you you stepped in a second before me, but I was about to say that when something traumatic like that happens, no way in hell do people remember details from like a shocking event from like something. No, no. No, it's cute. It's like however many people there are in the room at the time, that's how many different realities they are. Mm -hmm. Different things. And, 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 it's it, it's so funny i i will sometimes i will be in a space with with others um and it might be um like when we're out somewhere um you know and i just become aware of all the people and it's like it's like i stop and i'm in like a different motion of time and mm-hmm. everyone is like moving around me and i just become aware that every one of these people is in a different like little bubble. Yes. And mm-hmm. what they're experiencing right now is, you know, it could be completely different. And I will feel the energy off of people. Like I will feel this person is at peace. Uh-huh. This person is is okay. This person is in joy. Usually those people are the children. Uh-huh. <laughs> um, and then and then I will someone will come by and it's like you can feel there's like an iron cast around Uh them or either they're 
there's like buzzing, like, mm -hmm. like electricity, like coming out of them. It's like spikes. Yeah. And you can see how they move and how they hold their shoulders, how they hold their body when they walk. And I just become aware of all of that. And I just, it, it can be so overwhelming sometimes. It's like, because I'll feel so much like empathy for people mm -hmm. and I'll just like be like wishing everyone well. And I will know that. And I just feel gratitude. It's like, I'm sitting here aware of this and I'm mm -hmm. okay. I mean, even not, even though I have problems and stuff, it's like, I'm okay. But like 80% of these people, they're not okay. Right yeah. Now. And I, I don't even know. And, and then I'll like, somebody will be like blowing the horn because I'm like sitting in traffic and I'm like seeing everyone in their cars, you know, and I'm supposed to be like driving or I'm like mixed in line and I'm not moving. Somebody's like, Hey, you know, <laughs> we'll kind of like budge me out of it. Um, but is that, what is that? And why, why does that happen to me? <laughs> I think you're you're just more aware of the energy and the invisible aspects of mm -hmm. people physical you're seeing through all their stuff and you can sense it that's just being um kind of psychic i guess or intuitive you've done enough deconditioning to to feel to 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 step out of all of that and then you can see all the people who are still in it and these bubbles that you're feeling um you feel what, what you're feeling is you predict what your future would be like if you stepped into kind of like an interaction with them so mm -hmm. every person is carrying a world in them they're carrying their momentum their karma their trajectory in life what you're feeling is if I go into an interaction with this person, I'm going to in that direction. If we're going to interaction with this person, we're going to be in that direction. And you, and it's, 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 it's something that helps you be careful who, who you, who you come into contact with the buzzing that you feel the spikes. It's a mo it's a vital energy that's supposed to be within the body but is floating around in the field because people are fragmented. Every time we have a trauma or fragment, it's kind of like, imagine a chunk of light, a chunk of your energy comes out of the body. You eject to feel, you know, eject not to crash. And then it's kind of mm. like around and it's like a big density around. And then you have to kind of put it back into you. And that's a whole process with tuning forks and stuff like that. Um, so yeah yeah mm. and, and i feel like i can recognize some of these things because i i will feel this or see this and i will say i was that you know i i had there was a time when i was that when i was closed off or you know like in in, in an iron cast or i was um you know shooting out all kinds of uh anger or i was like maiden and my shoulders were down or i was walking hunched over i feel like when i see people i recognize um either a part of myself or or something i was at one point or another in my life and we're still going to be that we're still going to go into that day by day because we mimic each other and we can't always be conscious of what we pick up or it could be like mental stuff. It could be doubts. It could be anything, you know, from human design, open centers. It's it's like as long as we're here, we're susceptible because we can't stop being open to receiving these things from others, because if we stop being open to receive all of this static and uncomfortable energy, then you're also close to love. You can't kind of filter, okay, I'm not gonna feel this person's pain. I just wanna feel the fluffy stuff. Then you gotta, <laughs> you either close off everything and go live on a mountain or you feel everything from everyone. And then it's, you gotta be both. Mm. <laughs> you oh, know. No t shirts that say just the fluffy stuff. Just the fluffy stuff. <laughs> Fluffiness. <laughs> you, 
honestly, um, the, you you feel it's two different things. You feel the energy, and then you relate. Mm, yeah. Um, but but what you feel, I mean, you even described um, some things to me about about feeling and the sensing, um, even from your childhood. Yes. Yes, even even when I was a kid, I, I can remember um, things going on and I was little. I was like maybe six or seven. And I remember thinking, well, these adults, they this is not a big deal and they're making a big deal of it. or um, this really isn't right. This shouldn't be happening. And I mean, it, and when I think back about it now, it's like I was not really old enough to know. So how did I know that? Um, uh, we came already equipped. We came yeah. already strapping and packed. <laughs> <laughs> I, I guess I still need to hone or decondition or hone some of my um, senses. I feel like sometimes um, I'm sort of like the buffalo in the field and and um, I'm really glad Kay is around. She's the little whatever it is that sounds off when there is some danger. Uh, and I'm then the I'll just, uh, you know, I'll kind of graze in a different spot over there. <laughs> I, I, I'm the hummingbird. Leave yes, me the spotter. Or, or the meerkat or whatever it is that um, <laughs> yeah, and then and I don't see or sense anything sometimes other than the, the grass I'm eating. <laughs> <laughs> At least you're not smoking it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I was, uh, yeah. It was even worse. I mean, a, a stoned buffalo. <laughs> That's like a song. That sounds like a song title. Like a, like a, There's, a lone um, stone buffalo. <laughs> I like that. I Ted love Nugent, that. Ted Nugent that, did the Great White Buffalo, but um, <laughs> yeah, maybe we could maybe uh we could do the Lone Stone Buffalo or something. <laughs> <laughs> the lessons of the Lone Stone Buffalo. The lesson, the blessing, the blessings of the Lone Stone. Great. No longer stone. Now he knows. Did you guys end up watching the Super Bowl yesterday? Uh, part of it, yeah. A lot of yeah. it. It got late, and I was like, I don't care who wins now. I'm going to bed. <laughs> it was so weird because Mike and I watched the whole thing, and we both were sensing the the invisible energies on the field because so much happened, mm -hmm. and it was the first time it's ever been in Las Vegas. Yes. And I said, this land is either cursed or haunted or something because people, the one guy, we rewound it and to see how he tripped. And he was just, the way he was running out, he just fell. And we're like, what yeah. happened? That he was yeah. injured, taken off. Another guy just, oh, my hamstring. He's like, yeah. didn't even get yeah. hit. And it Nothing happened time and time again. And everyone was so angry on all the teams did you see the one guy kind of assault the coach? He went over yes. there. And he, was like, he shoved and the coach. Taylor Swift's um, friend. I was like, what is he doing? And we thought that's the kind of anger that gets you when you're not aware of it. If you're, mm -hmm. if there are these, this, I know because of this land and my husband and I both mm -hmm. experienced, there's those hidden energies that get into you. You get overcome with anger and like, why am I so angry? And you're like, oh, this isn't my stuff. But if I would have been more aware, I could have said this is not my anger i'm not taking it on uh -huh. from these invisible weird forces and we could sense that on the field the whole game and it was so close and it was so tense and it went into overtime and all of this jittery stuff we were just watching it like this oh cow they don't even know what they're in for mm -hmm. it was were, a lot of what you were just talking about Kay, with you know feeling those energies we were feeling them through the tv screen of you know, stayed away. Mm -hmm. It was really far. It was, um, I, I mainly wanted to see the halftime show, 
uh, <laughs> I really just tuned in for the music. So that was the, absolutely the best part. I just like just danced the whole time. That was really fun. Um, but the game, I was kind of like doing stuff and, you know, I would catch the TV as I was going back and forth. But um, mainly the halftime show was fantastic. Yeah. I was really glad Alicia Keys was there. I was, I had my fingers crossed. She was, oh, gonna be she there. was great. So she's she was, she's one of my favorites. And, um, but yeah, the game was really tense. It's funny. Uh, uh, DC and I were laughing because that's the first time we've turned the TV on in probably how long did we decide? Like three or four months. Wow. Yeah. The first time we yeah. even turned it on. Um, mm. And, you know, the TV used to play all the time. So, um, I mean, we get up, and turn it on. It's like I had to have the background noise, mm -hmm. you know, and now that thing, it just sits there. I put a, I put like a, like a tapestry over it. I mean, I don't even, <laughs> I don't even, I use it as the display yeah. of tapestry now. Yeah, I didn't. I didn't rest as well. I stayed up too late yeah. watching TV. I could tell. I could tell. I didn't. I didn't. Uh, I guess I had some deep sleep. I dreamed some weird stuff, but uh, but I didn't. I mm -hmm. tossed and turned. I didn't seem to have as restful a night. But that um, was that was the first TV we've watched in so long. But it was weird, Dennis. I mean, people were just falling down hurt yeah. without even making just contact. Without it getting hit. Yeah. You know, just I mean, turning a certain... Over and over. Yeah. I'm imagining... Just, uh, the, the anger. The little spats of, you know, people mm -hmm. yelling at each other, their own team members, let alone the other team. Mm -hmm. And the one against his own coach was just shocking. I, I, I can imagine two things. One is that Super Bowl usually and stuff like that. That's like the gladiator games of, mm -hmm. of today. That's like a, an emotional harvesting ground for people. And yeah, when you're there's so much at stake. Super Bowl, like what one commercial during Super Bowl is the most expensive thing ever. And then the people on those teams, they have so much pressure to perform in so many ways. And then the other, the, the other part of it was, I'm imagining the spirit spirit realm and all those spirits going, well, I'm looking like they're, they're tripping them up and then laughing about it. <laughs> uh, Guys, I'm gonna have to, I'm gonna have to end the, end the call now. Peace, health and abundance. Welcome to the channel. Subscribe, like, join the community. Feel free to ask questions in the comments and share your story. Check out the audio courses. Human Design Basics is free for everyone. After that, there is Human Design Intermediate, Advanced, Projector Masterclass, and Elemental Balancing. There are discounted bundles. Check out the testimonials from happy students. In the League of Wonders community section, you can have one-on-one -on -one human design sessions. You can join the Sunday group support Zoom calls. You can check out and follow me on Instagram. I also host daily free stress release movement classes on the Insight Timer platform. For additional content and artwork, you can always download my free ebooks. You can check out my gallery and art portfolio, and you can buy some of my merchandise printed on many different products, my original designs. Also, if you are in need of graphic design work, don't hesitate to reach out. Finally, if you have any questions or comments, if you wish to come on my podcast or any other collaboration, icreatelines at gmail.com. Peace, health and abundance to everyone. Are you a healer, a wizard, a medicine woman, an ambassador of holistic health in any form, looking for a place to offer your services to everyone and connect with others like yourself? Join us at Awakenpedia as a partner, a growing platform that offers integration into the community with your talents and many possibilities like hosting events, participating in retreats for a broad audience, a space for showing your offerings to all members and other magic. Bring your wisdom and the platform does the promotion for us. I am an affiliated partner with Awakenpedia, so to join through me, click the link in the description and join us. 
regular membership is also free for everyone. Everyone can also join as a member and gain access to all the services and wisdom the partners provide on Awakenpedia. That link is also in description and it's free for everyone. That's it for Awakenpedia.